Hey guys, welcome back to the 4-1 Week. Today we're going to talk about how to see if your Windows XP, Vista, or 7 PC is capable of being upgraded to Windows 8. So all you want to do is open up an internet browser, and we're simply going to go to windows.com. That's just regularwindows.com. We're going to click on Download and Shop, and then we're going to click this first little um, link we get to that says Buy Windows 8. Now we're not really buying it yet, we're just clicking to get a little bit more information for it. So when we click Windows 8 or buy Windows 8, it gives us some uh, some examples on where we can go purchase it or what uh, capable options we have as far as downloading it or buying the disk. So we're going to scroll down a little bit and then it says upgrading is easy, it talks about an upgrade assistant, we'll see that in a second. But the first thing we want to be aware of is our system requirements right here in the middle of the screen where we see system requirements. There's a few requirements, but these aren't really exact what we need to know. So we're gonna click on see the full system requirements right here on this bottom link of this paragraph. So when I click that, it gives me a little bit more in-depth list of the system requirements we need in order to run Windows 8. There's four main uh, components you have to have. If you do not meet these requirements, you cannot install Windows 8. So we're going to find out for sure if the, our computer is able to upgrade to Windows 8 based on these requirements. So there's four things, processor, RAM, hard disk space, and a graphics card. Now the processor must be this one gigahertz. We must have at least one gigabyte of RAM. We must have at least 16 gigabytes free on our hard drive or 20 gigabytes free if we want to install the 64-bit as well as this two gigabytes of RAM for the 64-bit option there. With the graphics card, we're going to see where that comes into play in a second. And that could be onboard or a dedicated video card. If you don't know the difference, it's fine. Windows will tell us if we're capable of doing that. So what we want to do is we want to click on Start. If you're on XP, it's going to be a little different. On XP, you'll click Start and you'll click Run. It'll be right down here. On Vista and 7, they don't have a Run option. So we're just simply going to type it in. And what we want to type is D. X D I A G and hit enter and this is a program called DirectX Diagnostic Tool and this program down here on the first page at the bottom it says I am running DirectX 11 if you have a number below 9 whereas it might be 7 or 8 you might want to see if you can upgrade your DirectX version if you're incapable of upgrading to at least the version 9 that's your first step of knocking out not being able to upgrade to Windows 8. The second step we want to look up here at our processor and memory. Now my processor is 2 gigahertz, so that's well above that 1 gigahertz uh, requirement and I have 8 gigabytes of RAM so again I'm above the 1 or the 2 gigabytes depending on if I wanted to do 64-bit or 32-bit. If you don't know which option the other video I have in, on installing Windows 8 you can look right here as well. This is, says I'm running Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. If yours says 32-bit, chances are you probably want to stick with the 32-bit option. If this says 64-bit, you might as well do the 64-bit option. Now the next step is to check this hard disk space. Again, this is very simple to do. We're going to click on Start and then click Computer in Windows 7 or Vista. And XP, it'll say My Computer. This C drive we have right here, right below it, it says we have 297 gigabytes free. That's well above that 20 gigabyte requirement. And if it doesn't say it on the bottom, you can right click and select properties. When you click properties, you get the same um, information just in a different form. So again, I can see I have enough free space to go ahead and do this. So my next step would be to make sure my software meets the certain requirements. We know my hardware meets the requirements. And this last uh, little section right here, additional requirements, this is specific to what you're trying to do. So if you have a touch screen, you need to, um, excuse me, if you want to implement the touch apps, you need to have a touch screen laptop or a desktop. It, you need um, internet connection, obviously, if you want to download stuff from the Windows Marketplace. You need a resolution of 1366 by 768. If you want to be able to do the snap feature for the apps to put one on one side of the screen and one on the other, uh, most laptops have at least that resolution. If you're unfamiliar on how to get that resolution, that's very simple to do. We're going to right click on the desktop and we'll select screen resolution. And this little option I have to set the screen size, 
if that is anywhere above that 1366 by 768, then I know I'm good. So mine definitely meets those requirements. So I'm okay there. To watch DVDs, you definitely need a DVD player, obviously, but as well as specific software. I'll do another video to show you what software is out there and available to keep you from having to purchase the Windows version if you, unless you just want to purchase the Windows Media Center. Um, some games need a higher graphics card that feature DirectX 10, maybe 11. They have a thing called UEFI that some laptops don't come with, built in with that could be necessary for certain boot options. If you don't know if you have that or need that, then it probably doesn't apply to you. A um, little bit other things you could read if you so want to. And then when we get through with this list and we figure out our hardware requirements, what meets and what doesn't, we would want to check software. So in order to do that, we'll click Upgrade Assistant. And what this is going to do is this is going to download a program that Windows has employed for us. We're going to run it. You could save it if you'd like. When it gets done downloading, it's going to automatically run and it's going to basically check my system and see what programs or applications I have installed that may or may not be known to work or not work with Windows 8. So I have to provide um, access control, click yes. Again, this is just a little program Windows developed. We'll give it a second. All right, so once Windows finishes checking out all of my apps, it tells me I have 49 apps and devices that are compatible nine that I need to review. So in order to review, I can simply just click the button and it'll tell me this will work, this will work, and then the ones with the red X means I need to go to that website or to that developer and double check if that will in fact work or not work with Windows 8. So kind of funny, they did away with Microsoft Security Essentials. Might have to update that version. Uh, some other applications and programs. And then down here, this tells me all of these programs and apps I have are in fact compatible. So nothing too crazy. Um, there's no really big red flags. If there was a software program that I needed that I use on a daily basis, then I might wanna make sure I emailed the company or called the company or go make sure there's an update for Windows 8 or a new version that I need to download. So when we get through with this, we'll just simply click close. We'll click next. And then this gives me the option, I can either choose to keep all of my settings, personal files, and applications. Well, I definitely wanna keep all of that. If I didn't really care about my applications and programs, I would just click just personal files. If I was doing a clean install and I wanted to pretty much wipe my entire computer clean, I would select nothing. Well, I'm gonna choose the first option and we'll click next. This is where you would, it would tell you which version is best for you. So since I'm upgrading from Windows 7 already, Windows 8 Pro is probably the way I would like to go. We can't get Windows 8 RT for a desktop or a laptop that's specific to tablets. So it doesn't give me the option to purchase that. So I would just click order. When I clicked order, it would want me to fill out. If I wanted the DVD, it would be an extra $15. Um, so I could check out. And if you purchase the DVD, you could watch the video I did um, before on how to update or install upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 8 using that DVD. Um, if you downloaded it without the DVD, you could still do the same function, same features. Step by step would be pretty much the exact same other than the first autoplay. Now, if we were actually going to buy this, I would fill this out. I would click next and it's probably going to give me an error. So I can't really continue. So I'll just say, okay, so then I could choose which way I would like to pay or purchase for this. So generally speaking, you could use credit card or PayPal. Um, either way is fine. If we chose credit card, we would enter our number. If we chose PayPal, we would log in through the PayPal um, website. So if I clicked PayPal, click next, I'll get a promo code that PayPal gave me. I would apply my promo code and then I could click buy. And once I clicked buy, it would let me download Oops, excuse me, you have to agree to their terms. Oops. So once we agree and we click buy, it would prompt to the next step and I could be able to download or purchase or download my purchase copy of Windows 8. And from there I could just continue with the other steps. If you have a Windows 7 computer or a Windows Vista computer, generally speaking, you're gonna meet these requirements. If you have a Windows XP computer, it may be a bit older and outdated. You might want to double check that you meet these stipulations. But if you could upgrade to Windows 7, 
you could probably upgrade to Windows 8. Um, Windows 8 does actually take a little bit less requirements as far as power usage that Windows 7 took. So it does run faster on the same hardware. So uh, I know there's been a lot of misconception about Windows 8 being slow or out, not outdated, but just not up to par with Windows 7 when in fact it's actually faster spec for spec and can do a lot more with the same resources. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to be posting a few Windows 8 videos here coming up shortly. Um, I would love to cover anything you have questions on. Uh, thanks for watching.